15 hours a day, that's all it takes. That's it, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, good work. Thank you, appreciate it. My work's similar in the way that these are made on wood, and originally they did have some oil that they used to put on the retablos. Um, I don't use natural pigments, but I kind of try to mimic that through various techniques just on the side. I just like to uh, put a lot of medium into the oil and kind of mimic the natural pigments. The way that it's similar is that I have a central figure and I have a border that goes across the composition. I do like to give some depth, which is a little bit new for retablos, and I like to give a little bit of my traditional practice in with the retablos too to make it my kind of voice. Uh, Santo Rubio, he would be known to miraculously help. So he would appear and give them water, give them aid, give them blankets. And so I put some water bottles that I've been drinking and he's there in the middle of the night in the deserts and he's uh, the patron saint of immigrants and the coyote call. So I do like to, and you can see the pical, pical picado on the side. And of course you have him barefoot since he is a saint and that's to signify that he's holy. And the footprints going from the front to back from the coyote and the, uh, the immigrants that come to our country, refuge seekers. And Sacred Heart, it just classic archetype. Um, I just put in some thorns on it. As far as this one, this one probably has the most symbology, but it doesn't have anything to do with a saint. I, I saw that <clears throat> the stigmata was very popular, and I wanted to do kind of like a New Mexican stigmata. So I put the blood in, inter interposed with the zeo, and kind of some tin work in through there, and some filigree, and it's coming in front of a hand, like the artist's hand, and the blood is going into the water that feeds the plants, and I wanted the composition and brown to represent our ethnicity and our skin tone and tra traditions. Put it in between some prickly pear to represent the southwest. And the coyote is here, it's a mixed bloodline, which we all are, we all mestizo and shadows of the European. But everything around it is uh, represented, is depicted as an indigenous. The only miraculous image that was created is indigenous, so I put it both on the top and the bottom. And you got the blood, the sweat, and the tears, and that's what kind of makes the struggle of the coyote, because it's not seen as a, something that's well known as, as being beneficial, but it's also very important to our ecosystem. And these, these two were meant to go together. I wanted to do a little mo bit of a modern twist. However, when I got accepted to the market, my first thought was like, what do people like? And it really pissed me off that I was actually even thinking about that. So I first thought of like sacred images for sale. So what I did is I said, what's important to me? And I wanted to put my faith and my artistic practice in the center, highlighted by the neon kind of sale. So it would just put a focus on what's important. And this, this is directly what I was feeling at the time. New sticker, that's being an artist. You just pop it on, that's the art life. Everyone thinks it's fantastic. And this is the deadline, the arbitrary, kind of temporary things that we put on as artists. Be like, this is my deadline, I have so much time. So this is a skull just free falling, up or down. And the shadow of it is to represent like the self-loathing, the depression, everything that comes with the art that people don't see. The red is the stress. The daisy flowers are they, they love me, they love me not. And they're going throughout the composition. <laughs> they don't know when you're gonna fall. And this one right here is a roadside ofrenda. And as time passes, the earth is starting to come up. There's dust on it, people forget. They forget the images in the picture frame. The oranges get old, and you have your remembrance for someone, it eventually goes. And this is just kind of like a farewell to those people who have been forgotten throughout the ages. And yeah, that's my new works along with the retablos for the market. This is an homage to the farm life. 
the red ever-changing uh, backgrounds is represents the sun, the heat, the blood, the sacrifice that the farmers have. So it's for the sacrifice for the harvest. The chili, as you know, in New Mexico, this is this is our thing, and we love it. We work for it. The sacrifice is there. But when we eat it, it's also a sacrifice because it burns. And so it's kind of like we work so hard for the pain. And the, the pain is central in our experience to actually have something that we love. Those are the things that really you can't avoid, but you have to take care of them. And the glove right here represents our tools. There is no glamour and being a farmer. It's just the very simple life. It picks both the chili and the go-heads and says nothing. And the jaw is separated from the skull is because there is no pride in saying, you know, I worked 60 hours a week. There, there is none of that. It's just expected as you go sun up to sundown and you just work for what you love, work to feed your family. And this is just an homage to farm life and the Mexican green chili. This is a direct inspiration from the women in my life and the experiences that I've had throughout life. When I was in high school, I would see kids or men coming out as homosexual and they would, they would get a lot of execution for it. And that's the strength that I could never, I mean, I get nervous when I wear a different shirt, but they were following the truth. They were being strong through their vulnerabilities and the women in my life has taught me to to share to have emotions to really it's evolved my the way that i communicate with people and it's also evolved my paintings so i wanted to have the pink and that's from my daughter she was i'm always in boas or something but to be a true man you have to give in to those vulnerabilities and have characteristics that are our mothers, our daughters, our wives teach us to have. It never comes from the male perspective, it comes from our female existence. And the green uh, onions are a symbolic representation of that growth, that we're not quite there yet, or I'm not quite there yet, but it's gonna turn soon. The red will come, the, the knowledge will come. The gladiolas are, the stem word is from Greek and it means sword. And this is considered a masculine flower, which is kind of like an oxymoron. It's very strong in its root word, but it's very gentle and it's very fragile. And yeah, this is machismo. And I wanted to just put it out like you can have like a dad bod, dress your stuff and still be puro, puro chingon, you know? This one is a uh, transplant. Sandia Trans put them in iconic New Mexican backgrounds to forage and do yoga in the Sandia Mountains. And I think that's very important to have that in our culture to keep. We don't want to be stagnant in our beliefs. We want to grow as a community. And that's, that's the reason we have the contemporary market versus the Spanish market. As we continue to grow, except they don't allow nudity. So <laughs> there's, there's a roadblock right there. Uh, this is called um, New Viejo. This was for a show I did last year. I painted this. One, I love the composition. This is my daughter washing my car and she would only do the quarter panel and she stayed there for about 30 minutes. The car was done, she kept on doing it, but it reminded me of how my dad used to communicate with me. He wasn't a very open person, but we bonded over classic cars. And that was a way that we, it wasn't quite work, but it was quality time that we spent together that we really bonded as father and son is working on all cars and our interests. Cause we didn't, we're very different people, but our common interest was a cultural icon in cruising and restoring old cars and this is just a new a new way that the new generation will eventually learn will bond and hopefully she can be like me and my dad uh, this piece right here is an ode to the new mexican chilling you can see in the corn husk right here in the house i have the zia symbol and this is going throughout the composition kind of like the crucifixes it's uh, very high up and you can see that there's a vertical composition and it goes directly over a bowl, a ceremonial Aztec bowl, which is where the chili started out from. And the rosary represents the Spanish who came in and it's coming out of the bowl and going off of the composition to represent that it was, um, it was spread out. Like the, the mix of cultures created it that we could have it here in New Mexico. And the feather represents um, 
prayer and like fragility. So this is the just an ode to the New Mexican chili. And the background, this is funny. This is all this is red and green. Lots of layers of red and green. <laughs> it's it's a story about Eric's maturity. Now him growing up and realizing uh, his uh, vulnerability and his uh, strength at the same time, you know, and it just spoke to me. Of course, I love it. I mean, I love, I make these pieces for myself to have a relationship with the person who's going to have it in their home. I want them to feel that same kind of strength, their vulnerability that I was feeling. So that's perfect. I mean, it's always, I like people who buy the relationship rather than the aesthetic. Yeah. Well, it's just, aesthetically, it's beautiful also. Yeah. yeah. But it means a lot to me to have that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. All, I mean, in the when I started 10 years ago painting, this was also for you. You know, this this is at the point where well, I am. That's if you think about it. I'm lucky. Where we were 10 years ago, our paths were destined to meet at this time. Interesting. Yeah. Beautiful. Right. <laughs>